Hi, I'm Ana Pereira, uh, the producer of San Cristobal with Amparo Aguirre. Uh, hi, I'm Omar Suñi Hidalgo, the director and writer of San Cristobal. Um, and it's a story of Lucas who visits a fishing island in southern Chile and falls in love with Antonio, a local fisherman. But, um, how did you actually get to make this movie in Chile if you're living in New York at the moment? Or I have been living in New York for such a long time. Uh, well, it's a, it's a long story. I've been, I've been sort of working on this concept for a while um, and I was doing this master's in New York at NYU, a university there, and in directing, and I needed to do a final project and I knew it would be this or some shape of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did develop it for a while and then we wanted to make this short and it was my final project for university at NYU. Uh, but also uh, a first uh, approach to the story that we want to develop further on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you show the story of Lucas and Antonio. Yeah. And a big part of the story is also about the homophobic society around them. I mean, it's a small village, it's a fisherman's yeah. town. How is the situation in Chile? Is it very conservative in the countryside? Is it homophobic? Or One of the things that I was really interested in exploring is how Chile is kind of like caught halfway between something modern and something like old. Because uh, um, there's definitely a lot of uh, progressive action towards uh, gay acceptance in general. and. and and I don't know, like if you went to Santiago, that's the capital, like it's very liberal and it wouldn't be really an issue. But, um, but I'm really interested in how that is in contradiction to um, the reality of provinces, like smaller towns or regions away from the capital. That it still is pretty hard and, and kids, even till today, get hit or, you know, violently threatened. Or, uh, so. Um, even though uh, Santiago is kind of like an island in that sense, it's not throughout the country. So I was really interested in exploring like that tension, like how how we live in that now. I don't know, like the, a civil union bill just passed last week, mm -hmm. which is groundbreaking for every conservative country like Chile. Uh, so there's been a lot of change towards uh, the whole issue, and that's great. But it's still kind of like halfway. So um, I, I was really interested in looking into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And talking about tension, you can also feel the tension between the two main actors. I mean, they see each other for the first time and they don't really talk with each other, but yeah. immediately they know they are attracted to each other and they sort of know about each other. Yeah. And I found it very interesting how that worked, that it worked via looks and not via words. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think, uh, I think like some, it's like, Attractions can happen that way. They're very rational and like not very verbalized, and you just like feel something for someone anywhere, anytime. And it's very sudden, and random, and like that moment is kind of there is that connection, and then we explore what happens after. Mm -hmm. And a symbol you chose. I mean, it's also the title of the movie. Yeah. It's San Cristobal, yeah. the saint for the travelers and yeah. for the fishermen. Why did you choose that one? I mean, on the one hand, for sure, because one of the people is a fisherman. Yeah. But th it also has to do with journeys. I had the yeah. feeling, but also in a symbolic way, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, n not not. Like, it wasn't like too drastic or rational. I was just really interested in like how some people like. Be, like I don't think Antonio is religious really like in a hard way or like but he would believe that uh, in something or in some uh, uh, as opposed to Lucas it's like more uh, I don't know more of an atheist and like uh, it's very small but I wanted to explore the detail in, in like in belief systems like that they, they they can be different and in, in those in these two guys and Antonio like he, he wouldn't to it, but he would, you know, uh, hold it in high regard or assign it value. And I wanted to show that, like how the different belief systems and how um, he can give him something of his that's very intimate to him, and, mm. and, and, and that for Lucas, kind of like um, he's touched and he just uh, feels that. Uh, and for the other part, like there was also this sense of like they're both departing or they're both like moving to a different state of 
their lives and their adulthood and and and, and I do think that there's something about helping each other through that and that story or the same story has something to do with that like how how two people like help each other cross something mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, across something, I had the feeling that they also had to cross lots of personal borders because they basically come from different worlds. Yeah, very different, yeah. Uh, which I was, yeah, that's true. It's, they, they, they cross whatever expectations they have from each other and they challenge that, yeah. Mm. A character that was a side character, but which I liked a lot, was the grandmother. Yeah. yeah. Because she doesn't say much, she just has a few lines, but with these lines I have the feeling she's described very well. Because she, she just says, well, this is not Santiago. Yeah. And you know exactly that she knows about her grandson, that it's no problem for her, but she, that she's also aware about the situation around yeah. and that she is actually a very awake person, knowing what's going on. Yeah. Um, how did you, well, what, what is your thought on this character? I, I wanted to, well, I do think that, like, um, uh, when I f like, f um, of course, is uh, they're very close to each other, her and, and Antonio as a family. They're, they're like their relatives and they're very close. So I think um, she was obviously aware. But uh, what I like exploring is, is how in a community there's like different shades of gray of, of like acceptance. Like, um, like for Lucas's sister. Uh, she she wouldn't have any issues with it, but then the grandmother represents like an older generation that because she's so close to her grandson, she can say that. But at the same time, she thinks that it should be hidden or or, or uh, I don't know less open. Uh, and I was really interested in sort of like explo in exploring that how people can have different degrees of acceptance towards it, and that's very common in Chile. The people. Uh, People are aware that being homophobic is impolite or wrong, but they would still allow certain shades of gray through within that. So it's like very interesting to me to observe that. Mm -hmm. um, it came from that, I think. Um, and right, yeah. Um, you are the producer of the movie. How did you get to the project, and what was your role in producing the movie? Like, how many ideas were came from your side? Well, the project uh, starts uh, with a with um, a found a Ibermedia found, no? right? Found, yeah. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, we will uh, we um, I do it later. Mm -hmm. we, we want to we we have to do um, a trailer, and with this found, and we thought that uh, it was a good idea to transform the, the teaser to a short film. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there was the, the beginning of the project, and then uh, right. And then, uh, well, we 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 shoot it in Valdivia. It's not uh, ah well. So uh, San Cristobal, the short film, start. Uh, it's um really it's a long film. Right. Well, yeah, I would, I wanna, what I, was, I think what she was trying to say is that we, uh, we've been working on this concept as a story as a longer feature and we wanted to make a first approach to, to it and um, we had been awarded this development fund and we decided to invest it in making the short and showing people what we're capable of and, and also introducing them to the story and to this world. Um, and we're really happy with how it turned out, but we are also projecting to expand it further and ideally make a longer version of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, uh, that's in a very simple like way, kind of like the timeline of how the producing kind of, uh, was set up. But um, in a very practical way, I, I, I had this idea and I approached Anna because she's a producer and we had friends in common and, and she and she was really interested in the project and we started working together and she also brought on her friend Amparo, who is the other producer who's not here with us today, she's in Santiago. Um, and the three of us worked very tightly together uh, in developing the concept and finding actors and, and, um, and also they've been really great at sort of um, giving their thoughts of what the story can be or the script. And so we work uh, very tightly together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
in this world in this world so this project was an opportunity to to find the crew of the of the of the of the right to find the people that we wanted to work with yeah oh, yes. yeah for the possible future feature film yeah yes. um did you have the premiere yet uh, no, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Yeah, there was a there was a press screening on Friday night, and there's one tonight. Okay. That's a, but it's only for accreditation, so the open screening is tomorrow. You you were not at the press screening, if I understood right, because you I just, wasn't. Yeah. But do you know how it was perceived the movie? Did you hear anything? I I actually got this email from this uh, British uh, master's student. Uh, saying that he really liked it and he wanted to interview me about it. So that was sweet, but <laughs> that, that, that's the only thing I know. Okay. Uh, so I wouldn't be able to say. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wish you a very good and pleasant first premiere. Thank and, you. And um, well, maybe I'll see you here back again next year with a long feature film. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> and have fun at the festival. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs>